Hi again. Welcome to the garage, I'm Pierre. A little bit of an unexpected job. Turning a multi Toyo CMM into a CNC. My friend uh, Alain Vaillanco, who owns a YouTube woodworking channel, producing videos in English and uh, in French. The woodpecker and in French, Le Gosse de Bois. Uh, since Alain counts on his CNC for making his numerous projects, he does from simple cutouts to more complex sculptures that are quite more demanding on the tools, meaning that the router and the structure of his lighter duty CNC suffers from being overworked. His previous CNC was starting to degrade to a point that of being unusable. Those extensive use routers don't last very long when being used for intensive duty. The bearings, casings, armature will most likely wear out prematurely. Following this, he decided to acquire a 1.5 kilowatt three-phase water-cooled spindle motor in order to upgrade an already overworked machine. Then, more problems started to show up. This motor weighs much more than the semi-pro duty routers. The extra weight rapidly took a toll on the lighter structure of his CNC rig. This brought an endless plethora of new problems, starting with the weight of the spindle motor heavily taxing the Z-axis mechanism. As you can see in the video, the rubber belts given up regularly. Those belts were replaced by small size lead screws. Those quickly wore out, causing intense vibrations and intolerable backlash. Then, the idea of installing some appropriate duty ball screws and build a new CMC machine from scratch. This is a moment of brainstorming, discovering the newly arrived ball screws, trying to figure how to make a decent and simple machine. Sometime later, I came across a local ad where an antiquated defective Mitutoyo CMM was offered for really decent price even just for use as a precision granite, granite table. At first, I thought about replacing my own precision table with this find, but the hurdle of this move was rejected. Then, the idea of turning this rig into a CNC crossed my mind. I had everything needed to get it done. All we had to do was to find a way to install the ball screws. The more I thought about it, and the more I considered. The heavy machine structure with three axes, all riding on ultra-precise table and air cushions. The question was, will it be able to support the extra weight required to install the new drive system and a heavy spindle motor? After some primary calculations and tests, we determined that it was worth the challenge. Making arrangement with the seller, Ellie and I got to the seller's place to pick up the CMM. After loading it in LA's trailer, you can notice that LA isn't really a real mover that I would recommend for transporting delicate instrument. Ah. Nonetheless, the CMM made it to LA's shop. With the help of Rene, his wife, it finally rested on the shop's floor and ready for the next steps. This is where the serious work started. First, evaluating and figuring out where we could anchor the ball screws and all the required hardware. Here, I'm taking measurements as precise as possible. My good buddies, Philip and also Robert, were solicited for ideas. The pad work started, paper edit design. This is how I learned how to draft and never evolved to CAD. After drafting the first 14 parts, time came to start making actual parts. As usual, Philip was the first to produce his share and with his ability, he all was impeccable. Some of those parts were destined for the Z-axis mount where the goal is to achieve maximum rigidity and minimum weight. Here you see me getting ready to assemble the Z-axis mount that will eventually hold the spindle motor. In order to make the assembly as square as possible, I lay down this large precision square. Before final fixing, I perform some dry fitting to ensure perfect final permanent assembly. No mistake was possible as most of the parts were to be fixed with industrial strength epoxy glue. 
A little more tolerance than what was designed was required in order to allow room for the epoxy in the joint. A big one inch reamer was used to make those fine tunings. Then the final step for the mount. There is a combination of screw and epoxy to hold everything together. Using clamps, the big square and the granite table to hold all the parts square until the epoxy glue cures. For reference, the epoxy I use is made by Miller Stephenson. This is an industrial product that I use for over 40 years. It always serves me flawlessly. There are plenty of special brackets and mounts to be made in order to connect all the driving systems on the basic structure of the former CNMM. This would allow all the ball screws and stepper motors combinations to drive the three axes. What you see here, this is a part that will connect one of the extra hardware assembly to the basic structure. All the aluminum parts are made from solid blocks of 6061 T6 alloy. An excellent candidate for solidity and machinability. About the parts where it would be impractical to start with solid blocks, they were made from flat bar steel and then welded. Preparing some parts to be machined. Lying out the measures with die and scribing the contours on the more elaborate parts is helpful in order to avoid frustrating mistakes. For those steel parts made from flat bar, the milling machine is ideal to achieve a good precision and efficiency. Since those are destined to be welded, in order to achieve full penetration in the joints, a special prep is required. Removing metal in a V-shape is the practical way to get it done. When heated, any metal will deform. To help with this fact, a good setup is required. By clamping the separate parts to this heavy cast iron angle, the deformation will be eliminated or at least greatly reduced. Perfect alignment is a must, so careful placement is required. The welds are made using a MIG machine using quite high voltage and deposition rate settings. In order to minimize the heat input generated by multiple passes, one heavier pass will be applied. Using a rod welder is also a suitable process. Last operation of those angles is to mill the welds in so they blend to the surface. Note that absolute precision on some parts isn't required. There is provision for adjustment when it all be installed. This is the day where Philip and I head to Allen's shop. First, we mount the hardware for fixing the x-axis using threaded inserts installed by the manufacturers for previous attachments. Here, installing the side brackets and making sure that they're straight, installing some of the welded steel angles that would hold the ball screw and stepper motors, finally connecting the x-axis to the boom traveling carriage. Next, the z-axis. Installation goes quite according to plans. As with the x-axis, there were some pre-installed threaded inserts in strategic locations for the previous functions. We were happy to take advantage of those, as making holes in a porcelain beam would have been quite a challenge. Fortunately, so far all of our measurements and calculations were quite accurate. All went pretty smoothly. Installing the Z-axis ball screw went according to plans. Note that everything installed so far can be removed or replaced easily, since no modification had to be made to their original structure. On our first attempt to install the Y-axis, we realized that it was going to be a failure due to the lack of rigidity of the link that was expected to move a system that weighed more than at least 100 kilos. Back to the drawing board. Despite some doubt on installing this assembly on the stand, not an integral part of the CMM itself, after some debate, we decided to go for it having to make new plans, machining and welding new parts and angle brackets. Back to Allen's shop for what we hope to be the final sprint. Some fine tuning was required, but in the end, we finalized the last ball screw until the axis was moving freely. This is where Allen is taking over, being quite knowledgeable in electronics, automation and etc. Installing the stepper motors, wiring, 
controllers connecting together those different systems in order to make the system functional. After making the CNC functional to an acceptable level, some add-ons were made and installed by Alain. Those boxes made the woodpecker way, covering the ball screws to reduce the amount of dust reaching them. He also made a sacrificial MDF surface to avoid damaging the granite plate, a very desirable attachment to collect the dust near the source. He also made a custom bracket to hold a 10 watt extra narrow beam diode based laser that would cut an engrave. As to show how well the CNC performs, here are some of the outworks performed with the new machine. We can also compare with some of the work previously done on the older flimsy CNC. We immediately notice the difference in the fine details being very defined compared to the former CNC. On this, thank you for viewing. Please like, comment and subscribe. And if you stay a moment longer, you'll see a few outtakes and examples of the performance from the new CNC. Regarde-toi, tu fais juste regarder, tu touches à rien, là. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't bloody touch anything. <laughs> you can just look. That's all you can do. <laughs> See a woodpecker? It doesn't have, a, doesn't have the, uh, what it needs to uh, pick in the middle, so you, you're going to break your pecker. Tu vois son chandail, the woodpecker? We suck yeah. really quick. Ça, there uh, you go. It's too hard for your pecker. <laughs> What's he doing in a, in a metal shop? I don't know. He's uh, he's trying he's trying to look smart. Ça va être difficile. Oh, it would be uh, difficult. Oui. <laughs> ça pour les amis français là, ça va être uh, le, le summum. Summum? Oui. oui. Le, <laughs> leur euh, comment je dirais le, le gosseux de bois parce que en français c'est gosseux de bois là. Il se retrouve ici puis. Euh, en tout cas, il n'est pas dans son domaine, pas en tout. Non, Mais non. ça fait rien, il a, il a du fun, il aime ça jaser. C'est comme une thérapie, puis on ne charge pas. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's in therapy and doesn't cost him. So, uh, mm. thank you, doctor. <laughs> okay, that's it. We're uh, turning this off for today. Everything's done. I'm done anyway. <laughs> <laughs>